welcome Hello. and good morning and good afternoon depends where you are perhaps even good night when you watch from United States good morning ladies and gentlemen Nishman Shenjimen Von Shihao and uh, let's start the fourth e-flight forum China uh, where you have our sponsors which because this was also quite difficult because we always had sponsors for the forum but getting an online forum sponsored was even more difficult but we got it so I hand over the word to our partner Miss Chen who from Z Park who has made the Chinese side of this forum happen like she's always done very great uh, for those of you who have been with us uh, it is definitely uh, a great work what she's doing also finding the different locations in in China but sure I have to mention our sponsors at, at least by name and the, the thing is great because we also in, in the sponsorship we are uh, we have uh, countries from around the world so we have uh, Rolls-Royce location in United Kingdom as everybody knows we have Bosch from Germany and we have Volong from uh, China and so with this I hand over to Ms. Chen. Uh, we welcome you to have this meeting online. This is actually the fourth uh, e-flight uh, forums and uh, we've uh, this is also a platform which attracts international attention. I want to thank you, first of all, for your great support. And for 2020, this is a very difficult year for different walks of life. However, uh, in e-flight industry, we do see a lot of progress. And we do believe that no matter what happened, we need to overcome the challenges and difficulties, and we need to continue this form of uh, forums to let all the works of life in this industry to understand the progress of e-flight and the electronic uh, aviations. So hopefully with this platform, we can give you more details and more news and information. So without further ado, let me give the floor to our first keynote speaker, which is Mr. Yang, Madam Yang Zhimei, the Deputy Director General of Airworthiness Certification Department of uh, Civil Aviation Administration of China. Welcome, uh, Madam uh, Yang. It is my great pleasure to be in this, to be part of this forums for the 2019. Can you hear me? Okay. So for the past years, people pay a lot of attention for the e-flights and the electronic air aircraft, and people have great support for us. So we always want to be part of this great forum. So it is my great uh, pleasure to take this opportunity to share with you about the following two topics. The first topic is about the part 23 rulemaking for the e-aircraft. E and for the second one, content I want to share with you is about the bilateral airworthiness between China and other countries. So next page. Thank you. So these are the two topics I want to cover during this forum, during my presentation. I also want to invite my colleagues, Director Chen Ye uh, from Airworthiness Department and also Mr. Zhu Xiefeng, which is a research fellow of our Airworthiness Department. So they are the expert in this respect. If you have any questions, please ask them. And uh, first of all, let's review the part 23 reorganization abroad. And uh, in 2011, FAA initiated the Part 23 regulation uh, work with the objective of, to simplify and streamline the certification process, reducing the cost while increasing the actual safety level in new entry level airplanes. And at the end of 2016, FAA and the EASA issued the NPRM and NPA. And at the end of August 2017, the new FARCS 23 become effective or taken into effect at, uh, during this time. So during this time, the AAC actually sent three experts, uh, including our colleagues, Mr. Zhu Xuefeng, who's here today. And those three experts have been working throughout 2017 to take part in this process. And 
they are in part of this reorganization. In the year 2019, we've officially started the reorganization of the rulemaking for part 23. And after some very important key timelines, we've established our work. For example, in November of 2019, we've asked the public opinions and uh, comments and organize the meetings to review. In December of 2019, the draft was submitted to the Department of Policy and Regulation. So as of now, we have an inner round of asking for the public comments and opinions and finished our review meeting. So the next step would be for CAAC to submit the draft to DOT for further approval. So what are some changes in our reorganization of part 23? There are different categories and content. So first, in terms of the aircraft category, there is a change. So we take references from the international practices. So we had a normal categories, utility, uh, aerobatic and commuter. So they're now all categorized as a normal category. And we've looked at the seats and performances and we divide them into four different categories. Moreover, according to the new requirement, the VLA is also included. So the bottom line is further extended. That means we have a larger and a more extensive scope for part 23. That is, VLA is included in CCAR 23 as part of the normal category. So as we've mentioned, uh, we won't have the past categorization, but we will have the passenger seats and performance of the aircraft as our categorization. So we focused more on the security to categorize our content into four different areas. Next, some of other revision contents. So for the content of the original regulations, we have more uh, descriptive criteria. So some of the design criteria and the compliance method are transferred to the corresponding normative documents. So we have more normative documents of more detailed and specific level. So in the future, when we issue our part 23, we'll issue those normative documents as well. And also, our policy to review the engine propeller and the electric propulsion system. So the engine propeller and the electric propulsion systems are allowed to be approved under the airplane type certificate and no longer required to be type certificated independently. So this is another very major change. The next major change is that uh, during to our confirmation with the public opinions when we are asking for the public comment, we know Is there any issues? Well, there are no issues. Please go ahead, please continue. So for those need and demand in our part 23, The speakers on mute. Well, let me continue.
So we have uh, three different categories for the development of the electric general aviation airplanes. So we have our requirement for the propulsion systems, for the battery and electricity distribution systems, as well as for the fire protection of the battery and the electric power systems. Well, sorry, we can hear some noises here. So some speakers is not muted. So could you please mute yourself? Our host, could you please mute one of the speakers that are not on mute? Well, next page, please. Well, we are trying to put up the slides with now. The, with the PowerPoint, one second. Uh, if you take it, uh, if you can take it. Uh. So uh, we were muted. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, it's on the screen. Sorry for this. We have a little problem by getting the PowerPoint on the screen again. Uh, I see it here next to me on the presentation computer, but I can't see it. Uh, is she screen sharing? No. No. But no. She, she has to share screen. Perhaps she is not share screen anymore. She is. Yeah. Ah, now it's coming up again. Sorry for this. And uh, we are at which slide? Is this okay? Thank you very much. Sorry for this. Next, uh, let me brief you on our, our updates for some of our bilateral collaborations. So as of now, we have two different types of agreement. One is between governments, for example, between China and the US, between China and Russia, China and EU. And the other type of the agreement and the collaborations are between the departments of government, for example, with Australia, New Zealand, Brazil, and Canada. So the bilateral agreement between China and the US was signed in 2005, which is BASA. So after the signing of BASA in the year 2017, it has entered into force and we have the IPA. So you can tell from 05 to 17, when we sign, and we eventually reached IPA, it took us 12 years. So all the photos that I'm showing right now is something that you can tell we have this long-term and cl close collaboration. And on the working level, we have a systemic understanding of each other and we've established mutual trust. So at last on this page, our director Xu, on behalf of AAD, CAAC, have signed the IPA. So this is between China and the US. In between China and EU, in the December of 2017, we've signed the draft for China EU BASA. And on the 20th, May 2019, Mr. Feng, our director, have signed into force our China EU official BASA. And in September 3rd of 2020, it is entered into force. So two days after it is entered into force, we have TIP, that is TIP. So we have the final signing and consultation and entered into force of our TIP, that is the TIP between China, EU, BASA. So 
at the same time, we also have this application, or rather the addition one of tip. So the tip is also part of the China EU BASA, and this is the principle that we've been following as long as uh, together with their Appendix 1 and Appendix 2. The China EU BASA has learned from our scope of application. So after Brexit, it will be 27 members of EU. So that is the scope of application. So that also includes some non-EU members, that is four non-EU members, but they are under the EU regulation. So the agreement we signed with EU has specified our scope of application for airworthiness and we shall follow the regulation of the EU. That is the common rules in the field of civil aviation. So for the larger commercial aircraft or helicopters, that is 650 kilograms larger, are under that scope. And for the rest, we will have other kind of agreements signed or collaboration with these different countries that is not under this scope. So as you can tell, this is the 20th of May of 2019, our director Feng, on behalf of the Chinese government, have signed official BASA with the EU. For this photograph, is after the draft of BASA is written. So in the process of consultation, negotiation for TIP, we took this photo. So after the consultation, I believe uh, it is in January of this year, we started working in, uh, in April of 2018 we, we worked all the way to January. So it took us a little bit more than a year to finish the consultation process. And just before the outbreak of COVID, we've finished the last and final consultation in Cologne of Germany. And on the right, those photographs were taken in September of this year. Uh, it is in the consulate of EU in China, and we've signed online uh, the tip. So Director Xu from AAD of CAAC have signed the document on behalf of the Chinese government. And on the background, uh, you can see there are a lot of our staffs. We have Deputy Director Hu, who've witnessed the signing. We've also have other relevant department, including the uh, political bureau and our international relations department under CAAC, etc. So other than Director Xi, who signed the tip, on the tip, we also have an appendix. So that is under the scope of AEG which is the work of the non-standard department of AAD. Uh, Mr. Zhu Tao have finished this part of the work. So that was the photograph on site. To summarize, in between uh, China US or in between China EU, BASA is an agreement between two governments in the field of aviation including airworthy certification, the maintenance organization, the licensing of personnel, operation, air traffic control, and other areas related to aviation safety. And for the implementation procedures under BASA, it would cover the, the design approvals, the production surveillance activities, uh, the mutual trust, 
the mutual recognition, as well as the airworthiness approval. So as you can see here, uh, when it comes to the scope of cooperation, uh, there are some cooperation agreements. They have some demands. For example, they want to have TCPC separation. And probably there are some industry representatives in our audience. And in the future, uh, they probably have a need like this. And also to separate TC and PC. So we will sign several papers to make that happen and also to extend the scope of PC certification. And also for the type certification, we can have on-site certification for our overseas suppliers on-site in the future probably. So this will pending in the, for the future. So in terms of IPA scope of cooperation also includes Could you please turn to the uh, uh, previous page? Thank you. Previous page. Thank you. So in terms of the actual process of execution of these agreements, it also includes the product. For example, includes civil aircraft, engine propellers, and parts and also some modification package. And also the acceptance or validation of design approval was based on these two principles. The first is based on the risk to determine the inspection method. The second is based on whether the other party is the CA or not. And also uh, the other party shall be the CA during this process. This is the principle. When it comes to the acceptance of the production appro approval, this is based on uh, trust, the mutual acceptance of each other's production surveillance system. So this was approved and uh, we have our own airworthiness labels on our products. And then they will be accepted by the other party. Next page, thank you. So in terms of acceptance of airworthiness approval, it not only includes the used aircraft and also the new aircraft, new and the used aircraft were all included and also include the aircraft from the third party countries. For example, let me give you an example. For example, uh, let's take China and the United States as an example. If there's a product coming from Canada and they want to export through United States borders to China and China as the importer of that Ch Canadian aircraft, we can also accept that as long as it meets our IPA agreement's demand. Actually, the key here is that both parties into this agreement will accept third party or even fourth party uh, countries exports products. Another thing we need to keep in mind is that the current process will probably include some futuristic from future products, for example, UAV. We don't have a very clear cut boundary for those products. So in the current process, there are some things that, that is still under negotiations and there are also products and we can also, uh, uh, the achievements of extensive technical support and cooperation between two authorities can be reached and also other categories of products not specified in the TIP agreements could be dealt through special arrangement on a case by case basis. So in the future, I believe that the bilateral collaboration will enjoy a very wide scope. So these are the, my presentation. And that's it from my side. Thank you, moderator. Okay, that's all. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, thank you also for having the time uh, for us, because I know you must be very busy. This is also the 
only accept uh, acceptance which we uh, exception sorry which we have um, that uh, Ms. Young she cannot uh, stay until the end of the session because she has to rush to the next time. So if uh, we haven't received any questions by now, um, I have some uh, questions for you, which I uh, interest me. There is this interaction between the agencies, which is uh, very important. Um, how is the interaction uh, going forward especially on electric aviation can you give any uh is this a kind of focus of uh caac he's not translating oh first of all we encourage okay. that kind of interaction and uh just like I've introduced before, Mr. Zhu Xiefeng, which is here, my colleague, will be the contact person for you, all of you, for interaction. If you have any questions, you can throw it to, to him. We can keep in touch. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a, another question from one of the members, uh, Olaf, who will speak right after you, actually has a question. Willie, I cannot hear Olaf. Hi, Willie, I cannot hear Olaf. Hi, Willie, I cannot hear Olaf's question. Just asking Madam Chen, uh, if there are other questions. Okay, so we do have some question. Uh, one of the question is how many certified E aircraft in China right now? That is one of the question from Olaf. And uh, also about another question is about there are there other relative policies about the uh, our worthiness certification for engine plus aircraft? Hi, Ma Madam Chen. When it comes to the, we do have a lot of uh, E aircraft being certified for airworthiness, but we don't have a very updated number for that. If we have the number, we will refer that number to you, and then you can share it with our audiences. And the second question about the joint airworthiness certification for engine and flight. So for our P23, no matter what category they are in, they can be certified jointly with their aircraft plus engine. Uh, the engine is part of the aircraft. And uh, so the engine suppliers could be the supplier to support the OEM of the flights to go through the airworthiness process. So it's the same with the past. We can regard it as part of the aircraft, but when it comes to the standards of the airworthiness certification, it's a little bit different. Okay, thank you, uh, Secretary General Yang, and uh, thank you very much.
So good afternoon and good morning to everybody. I hope you can hear me well. If, if not, please, please let me know. Uh, my name is Olaf Otto and I'm the Director of Customer Business for Rolls-Royce Electrical. I'm very happy to be here to um, give you a little overview in terms of what um, our uh, position, our, our view of the um, uh, electrical power propulsion market for aviation is. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, Thank you. So let me just start by saying that um, it, it, it's great to be able to, to come to you and, and speak from a point of view of, of Rolls-Royce. Um, uh, Rolls-Royce has been in China um, for um, a significant amount of time. Um, we've, we have about 55 years in um, China's civil aviation industry, uh, more than 2,000 employees um, currently working there, including joint ventures. Um, we're powering over 500 um, aircraft um, we're also uh, supplying control and safety systems for um, China's nuclear power plants. So Rolls-Royce, not only as an aviation supplier, but um, as, a, as a real um, power and propulsion supplier um, in, the, um, in, in the world. And um, we're very well um, represented, I think, in, in a number of regions of China, which is, um, which is great, I think, for, um, for um, the presence in the country. Um, so let me take you forward a little bit on to the aviation side of things. If we go to the next slide, please. So from a point of view of um, uh, the uh, electrical markets in, in aerospace, um, the markets really fall into different segments depending on the, um, the size and the requirements of the airplanes and the aircraft. And um, we believe that the application of different technologies depends on um, the usefulness for the specific segment. So if you look at the smaller aircraft, we believe that it's possible to um, fly these in all electric um, configurations. But as you start going into higher uh, power aircraft and, 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 and larger aircraft, um, hybrid electric um, or more electric uh, does become more relevant and more meaningful. And there's a certain point where an all electric aircraft um, ceases to be relevant, not necessarily just from a point of view of the technological feasibility. Using batteries, you can, of course, get even very large planes up in the air. But the question is can you make an economic business case out of that? Can you build something that has a feasibility to work for the operators. The early markets from our point of view, um, small propeller aircraft, EV tolls, and commuters. Now, each of these market segments has um, slightly different requirements. Um, all of these in Europe in the CS23 class, even though they're in different um, segmentations, we believe that these markets are um, ready to um, enter into service. I think we will see the small propeller aircraft um, entering into the market within the next two to three years. Um, EV tolls have been in the news to um, in an extensive degree. There's a lot of people working on this and also here within um, this decade, I believe we will see um, the EV tolls um, really taking off as it were. Um, there's already one um, company um, with Volocopter who has an EV toll um, on the market, but there I think there are many more that are going to be ready to join. I think one of the um, most underappreciated segments really is the commuter segment, though. Um, this is a segment which has a large potential to be reinvigorated by the electrification uh, promise. Um, so it's able, we were able to build planes there that um, have commercial viability with the technology that is um, about to um, enter into service. And the commuter planes really can um, add a new dimension to our travel. The possibility that these um, aircraft are going to be cheaper um, and more silent and less polluting will really offer a potential to reinvigorate regional airports and, and connect um, distance communities. So from our point of view, 
Um, this, the, these are, these are um, three core markets. And if we go to the next slide, please, the, um, the, the, the aim and, and what we're doing within um, Rolls-Royce is um, actually preparing for electric propulsion systems to launch for, for these markets within this um, decade. So uh, we have not only the motors um, and, and the inverters, but also the battery systems, um, the energy distribution, um, and further um, elements under development today. What are we doing in terms of the um, in terms of development? Um, here are a few examples of things that we are um, working on today. Uh, so um, apart from um, designing and developing the eventual products. Um, we're also um, um, still working on uh, expanding the art of the possible a little bit. Um, so the plane that you see here, the Excel plane, um, really serves as an aim to stimulate the electrical supply chain um, and to um, develop certain topics about the battery and the battery integration into the plane. Um, and we've had the rollout of this um, aircraft already, and we are um, aiming to start flight testing as soon as possible, as, essentially as soon as the weather and COVID allow it um, next year, um, with the aim of uh, breaking the world uh, speed record for an electric uh, plane. It's a very exciting project um, from our point of view. Um, this is a little bit more on the lower end of the power range, but if we go to the next slide, um, I can also share with you a glimpse um, in terms of what uh, we're working on for um, a, slightly sl a slightly larger aircraft. So this is um, uh, the Aptus I-5, for which we are building a fully um, serial hybrid electric power plant system. And you can see the system design on the um, bottom right hand side. So this is using a, uh, an, a, a gas turbine from Rolls-Royce together with our um, Rolls-Royce uh, motors um, in electrical um, and, and other electric components such as the converters and the inverters to <clears throat> um, be a fully uh, running a serial hybrid system. We've tested uh, the individual components already um, we are in the process of finalizing um, build on some additional components. Um, they're all going to be shipped over uh, to Germany where they will go into an integration uh, with an aim to have the system flying um, by the time we reach about 2023. We've got a very extensive testing schedule that sits uh, behind this. So, um, a, a quite an exciting project for a number of reasons, uh, a fully serial um, hybrid system that is being demonstrated, um, very low rotational speeds um, at around 1000 RPM, uh, aiming to make the aircraft um, very, very silent. Um, and then in terms of the application, obviously there, there are a number of applications that we foresee for this aircraft um, from um, uh, surveillance, uh, reconnaissance, transport, um, uh, to actually cargo applications, uh, which could become very, very meaningful and very useful um, once you have them in a silent application. Um, not only in the fixed wing segment, if we go to the next slide, we've also been working for um, quite a long time on EV tolls and uh, this project we've talked about in the past a uh, number of times. Um, the testing campaign um, that uh, we ran in this year, or that was run in this year, um, was very successful, um, no malfunctions, a very exciting project of working with our motors and our inverters and our electron distribution centers and really testing out um, some of the um, challenges that you have when you bring this kind of um, aircraft into the air. Um, this is the most powerful EV toll that um, has yet flown. Um, and we've drawn a lot of learnings out of this um, already. And um, I think on the next slide, um, we have a very um, nice picture also showing this from the side, um, uh, showing it on the, on the approach to um, its landing zone again. So it's, um, it's been a very good learning curve and we're taking the, um, all the knowledge that's been generated in this project forward in order to then produce um, the actual 
products that we want to have ready in this market. So if we go to the next slide. <clears throat> Um, this is um, a, a, a small summary in terms of um, what we are, um, what we're focusing on at the moment. So um, we still have a lot of innovation that is ongoing. Um, we um, are refining um, our uh, equipment that we're building. We've started to bring first products into certification. Um, so we have a, uh, an electropropulsion unit that is um, on a certification path uh, in Europe with a concurrent certification in the USA with the FAA. So for us, um, it, it's really a question of now pushing um, items into that product path to make them available as products to the airframers. Um, as we go on, of course, we have to uh, work together with airframers and with other partners in, in terms of making um, a progress here. This is not something that we can do by ourselves. Um, certification authorities have also been very, very um, helpful in, in, in all their approaches. Um, and last but not least, it's a question about um, ensuring that we have the full supply chain um, stood up now so that um, we can also deliver these um, products into a certified uh, domain going forward. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think um, we have a very um, exciting time ahead of us um, and I'm happy to take any questions should you have them. I hope my sound is now getting better. Thank you very much, Olaf. And uh, uh, very interesting presentation. And Olaf and me, we know us already quite some time. Also, when you were making electric propulsion system still uh, under another label, because some people who are not that update may wonder where Siemens electric air aircraft state, and this is now uh, Rolls-Royce Electrical and it's great that you're continuing with so much energy uh, to the further development. I think it's very important having large players uh, doing this. So um, same as important is like we had authorities, we have uh, a large industry player, now we have research. Uh, our next speaker, our next guest is uh, Professor uh, Zhang from BUAA, Beihang University, um, and I think uh, she will give us a, another aspect of electric flying. So um, please, um, yeah, we'll see. I think we still see Ole. Uh, perhaps you can stop sharing screen, uh, Olaf, because I still see your screen. Uh, I'm not sharing my screen. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Now. Now we're there. Perfect. Um, and then uh, Shuguang, uh, I can't hear you at the moment. I hope you're not muted. Sorry for this little technical problems. Okay. Now. Yes, I hear you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, first of all, uh, my appreciation goes to William, Mr. Chen, and to the entire team. Thank you so much for providing us with such a great, great platform during COVID so that we can continue to share our opinions and we can seek further collaboration. So thank you so much. This forum uh, I've attended for all the previous yeah, years. I'm, I'm in the cable, Actually, so I'm I've sure that I this platform and this forum's contribution to the communication of the e-flight community. With the introduction of e-flight and the electrification actually brings about more possibilities for aviation. Of course, comes with it some issues and questions with airworthiness and last year, we've put forth this idea. In China, we need a relatively stable team of experts to support us so that we can combine and join our efforts to together promote the progress of our industry and to support the airworthiness standards. 
So in 2019, last year, we convened our conference and established the Committee of Electric Aircraft Airworthiness Standards in Shijiazhuang. So let me brief you on what we've done in the past year. So this is a photograph of when we just started the committee. I think a lot of our participants today have witnessed this moment last year. So our motivation to establish this committee is that you know there are issues and questions with airworthiness and the labeling. So we've established such an organization and we've also gathered the support of the Chinese Society uh, of Aeronautics yeah. and Astronautics, yeah. that is the yeah. CSAA. And the director of CSAA really welcomed and supported us. As of now, we are a committee yeah. under yeah, sure. CSAA, just, just and just we are providing so, CAC I, I with our support. Yeah. With regards to rulemaking, regulation, as well as the communication with different enterprises. Next slide. Yep. So, um, so if you our purpose, as I've talked about, uh, is to form uh, a team of experts um, who are willing to work together uh, to promote uh, the development uh, of uh, e-flight yes. and the and electric then, aviation uh, industry uh, in China. We need to work with our international friends. We need to stay in close touch with each other. It is a great platform provided by William today. And it is part of this effort. And we also need to establish the airworthiness related technical standards in China. So I saw that some of our friends raised the TC questions. And I think this is but something that needs the contribution of different participants so that uh, we can gather the dynamisms and the latest development uh, in this industry six so that e flight and the electric aviation can be actually implemented mm. in the ground on the ground here in china so that is our purpose and our starting point of establishing such a committee and after the committee is that is established. It is really welcomed by all in the industry. We have different members joining us. Of course, this is only part of the picture. We have other members applying to work with us. At the very beginning, we have some of our founders, organizers. Uh, we have the COMAC, Beijing Aircraft Technology Research Institute. We also have uh, Wolong, CATL, uh, Li Shen, etc. So we have more and more members joining us. So uh, everyone work in the same team and they join in voluntarily. Doesn't matter when you join, you are part of us. We will also have individual members. Next slide. Thank you. So that was our expectations and our purpose. So this year, actually on the working level, we have some updates for different projects and programs. And we will have them as our speakers coming up next. Um, and we've um, talked about uh, the registration uh, uh, that include in the session, uh, uh, from uh, Reishan, that is a two-seater aircraft, the and the four-seater electric aircraft, as right now, is uh, being TC'd under CCAR, and Yihang actually got the flight permits of FAA. For COMAC mm. Beijing, okay, then she they are came, working uh, she with UAM, uh, uh, that so is uh, the uh, R3 VTOL released Danke, uh, in ciao. this spring. And also GLTF2A, which is quite well known, they also issued their two, the the most updated TF2A. And in November, we also have the honor to witness the Auto Flight EVTO series in November. And uh, Mr. Chen, uh, later he will give you the detail about the auto flight and uh, they want to have this uh, logistics done by Iveto. And also there are some non-conventional uh, 
uh, companies uh, or institutions, for example, Zhejiang Laboratories. Uh, these are just part of the story. And also, there are also other representatives that have their own eVTOL association and their own eVTOL project that is under research and development. So I think that in China, Uh, what we worry about is about the general aviation industry. There are people saying that how can we expedite the process? Where is the market and how, how can we make profit? This is people's concern. But actually we are making this concerted efforts, trying to use technology, to use new technology to create the market by ourselves. So I, th I think that over the past year, people are moving around to try to create the market for e for e-flight. And previously, Secretary Yang from CAAC have already shared with you about the P P23. And now we have uh, rev we are revising the draft of the CAAC uh, the CAAC's uh, opinions on the airworthiness certification on the normal I class see. aircraft revised draft. And speaker. also. Uh, in November, the State Council also required to accelerate the development of UAM development strategy layout and standard formulation to try to speed speed up the process. So this is from central government to support our e-flight industry. So this is the policy background of our market. Next page, thank you. So over the past year, as a expert panel institution, we've, this is something that we did for the past year. First, we evolved a drafting, uh, in where we, we were involved in drafting the CCAR 3R4 subpart H documents, providing uh, drafts and uh, suggestions and recommendations during this process. And uh, this year, another big thing is to draft new Part 23, Chapter H, Air Worthiness Certification Guidelines. It is about the mobility and risk of the e-flight, and also try to separate standards with demand. So this is uh, the Part 23, Chapter H, Air Worthiness Certification Guidelines. So this is the one of the biggest thing for this year for our committee, which is also a very heavy duty for us. Hopefully, before December this year, we can give you the draft of this new Part 23 Chapter H Air Witness Certification Guidelines, and uh, uh, we also have already sent out the request for proposals, so hopefully that you can keep your attention on this. Another thing for us is about electric power systems for electric aircraft, which is a technical specification document for electric power systems of electric aircraft. This is under compilation, and next year, uh, there are some, there will be some is, overlap is between the documents of uh, technical specification with the new Part 23, uh, Chapter H, Air Witness Certification guy. Guidelines. And now we're uh, also trying to do something uh, new, which is focus <laughs> on eVTOL. Uh, and we will have a research project uh, of uh, air worthiness uh, certification okay. technology of unmanned electric power vertical takeoff and the landing aircraft, which is eVTOL. And so two, two together. OK. Good. We uh, the uh, CAAC Airworthiness Department gave us this job trying to look at the airworthiness certification for e um, Tina, Tina, no, oh, Greg, so Greg is in. Okay, sure. These are some of the things that we are doing this year and for the last oh. year. And of course, we are trying to provide service for China's market. Oh, In the meantime, we are also stuff. trying to join hands with our international Klaus partners. Klaus Actually, in Klaus fact, no, we are I will send it over to very okay. mean to collaborate with our overseas markets. And uh, Ms. Madam Chen have collaborated with Gamma uh, to host a Asia annual conference in 2018. And also, we have close talk with uh, other partners. And of, of course, during the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020, we used to have some plans that cannot be executed. However, in 2021, we will carry out practical collaborations with other international organizations in order to push forward research, standard setting, and other activities. So these are some of our plans for the next year. Thank you. So overall speaking, 
uh, using I mean, you such could... a short span of time to share with you some of our research projects, yeah, some I mean, of our documents that we are compilating. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I will not give you the details because the time constraints, but uh, hopefully you can contact me in the yeah. future. You can give me some suggestions and recommendations uh, in the future. And uh, we do hope that for the e-flight industry can really take off and we can enjoy a promising future. Thank you very much. So thank you for your giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Xu Guang. And uh, it's really always very interesting to see how, uh, and I will put my screen on again, uh, how, how interest, interesting to see how uh, the international cooperation is working. I know that you work a lot with uh, Munich University and with other people around the world. We will hear uh, some other presentations from Munich University later. Um, and uh, so uh, from the research we go to our next speaker who is Greg Bowles who has been speaking at the eFlight Forum in uh, different positions um, and now he is uh, with Joby uh, I think everybody of you heard of, uh, about Joby who is uh, one of the leading manufacturers of the eVTOL in, in the eVTOL field and uh, before he was at Gamma uh, which Xu Guang just mentioned and working for the whole industry and he has an overview I think which will be very interesting for you because we talk about certification and uh, he was working in this uh, for a long time so and I have to mention one thing uh, we are in Europe or in uh, China where it is uh, either morning or afternoon but Greg he did get up at three o'clock in the morning for being with us he's in United States welcome Greg uh, on the virtual stage Thank you very much, Willie. I appreciate it very much. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here. Sorry. Uh, here we go. There we are. So um, thank you very much. And, and I appreciate uh, all the conversation so far um, on the early morning here and in the US East Coast. Um, and it's honestly, it's very exciting to see how fast uh, the space has developed in China. Um, we certainly have been working hard around the world on uh, CS23, on Part 23, on global standards for existing new aircraft, electric aircraft, and eVTOL. And it's really exciting to see how fast uh, this is all coming alive in China. So uh, today, as Willie, you just said, I'm gonna give a quick overview on the general certification path uh, on a global basis for uh, electric aircraft. And then later in the week, I will have a chance to dive deeper into how we certify eVTOL um, using those uh, processes. So um, I think uh, off we'll go here quickly. Um, I think what's very important to recognize is that we are at a pinnacle moment. We're at a very uh, unique point in time. Um, we can't necessarily look around and continue doing what we've been doing. This is not an iterative point. Uh, if we were to look back in 1903, when the early piston engines allowed uh, flight of the Wright brothers and, and uh, certainly in France and other places in the world, uh, and then in 19, uh, 1914, we started to see more powerful piston engines through the 1940s. Uh, the jet age occurred in the 1960s. The 19, that was a very important point for the world. Um, today, uh, we stand at the beginning of the electric age of aviation. This is um, an age that will have huge impact on the globe. And it's exciting to see how fast China is working to industrialize that. All around us, we see changes in society. We see how we have evolved from uh, the world of uh, paper into electric, and that has provided a lot of access to information, a lot of access to data, um, and it has accelerated uh, the expectations of people in society. Um, aviation has not kept up uh, at that same rate, uh, and electric aviation actually brings us across that threshold. So you could ima imagine for a second uh, a telephone, an iPhone, or uh, a similar smartphone that was powered by petroleum would not be <clears throat> very fast to uh, update. 
but our electric iPhone, everything's electric. It's software driven. We once we have gone fully electric and solid state with these devices, uh, their capabilities continue to evolve uh, on a daily basis. And that's the world of aviation we're moving into. And that's a really important point. So once we get across this threshold of mechanical and uh, hydro and petroleum systems working together into fully electric integrated solid state solutions for aviation, uh, it's going to accelerate everything we do. And so the processes that CAAC is putting into place right now is really important. So to bring a new design to market, uh, there are really three key ingredients to be able to commercially operate aircraft in, um, in a safe and, and globally recognized way. So there's been some discussion about this thing called the type certificate. So how do we type cert certify uh, traditional aircraft? And then what's the difference for electric aircraft? Um, the second is the operating certificate. So if we're going to commercially operate an aircraft, we have to do it under a commercial operating certificate. Uh, and then we need to qualify pilots to fly that aircraft, or uh, we need to design the systems that take over that responsibility. So if an aircraft is going to be autonomous someday, it needs to pick up all the responsibilities and roles of the qualified pilot. And so those ingredients let us commercially operate the aircraft. So if we take one step down into type certification of the vehicle, this is the, the key conversation for this morning. Uh, if we take this look, uh, the type certificate has a number of areas traditionally. So there are going to be requirements that are set by every government around the world. So th this is uh, C CCAR uh, 23, for example. Uh, then we have methods of compliance. These are the standards and the, uh, the materials we use to specify exactly the tests and the criteria that will hold the design to once we know the rules, it's one level below, it's the standards, it's the material we use. Uh, and then after this, we demonstrate compliance. So those, the rule, we know the rules that we have to meet. We know the details of the requirements for testing, and then we execute it. So we do the testing, we do the ground testing, we do the flight testing, we do the analysis. And the final piece is a verification. So an independent group, uh, a regulator or a delegated group will verify that all that testing was done safely and appropriately. And at that point, a type certificate can be issued. And if that process meets uh, the bilateral agreements or ICAO requirements, it can be recognized around the world. So what's different with electric aircraft is uh, first the area of rules. So in the rule area, there are some differences that we need to look at for electric aircraft. And in the means of compliance, there are some differences. But what's important to recognize is the process overall is the same. So the same four steps to certify electric aircraft. And the showing of compliance and the finding of compliance, those last two pieces are the same. So uh, the, the, the processes are traditional, they, they work well. So if we take a look at the first block there, the requirements, uh, there is a really great start under CCAR 23R4. So that work uh, is going to solidify the path for electric propulsion. I am really excited to watch uh, the CAAC bring that into existence. I think maybe 10 or 15 years ago, I had the opportunity to work with a lot of the folks from CAAC on the earliest days of uh, CCAR 23 and Part 23 and CS 23 and, and other similar rules around the world. Uh, I remember, in fact, we had a chance to go flying in the United States. Uh, if any of you are on, with, with, on the call today, it was a wonderful time to go, fly, uh, go for a flight in the US to show you the system in the US. Uh, the next piece is the methods of compliance. And this block here is uh, to today in the US system, in the European system for CS23, we use ASTM F44 standards. And there has been great involvement from folks around the world in those standards. Uh, we had a really good briefing just a minute ago on CEAAS, uh, sorry, C, uh, yeah, CEAAS. Uh, and, and that group is standing up a, a range of new uh, standards. I think one of the keys here 
just as with this first block, making sure these rules are very closely aligned around the world. So the closer the language of these rules can be to each other, the more easy it will be, the easier it will be to move these products and, and let Chinese products move around the world um, and, and go into commercial service around the world. This standards area is similarly important. So working together among standards organizations, for example, ASTM, uh, EuroK, CEAAS, having these standards groups work closely together to set the, the same requirements uh, is very important as an industry. Um, and I will say what's exciting about this material is that this structure not only supports traditional electric aircraft, fixed wing airplane aircraft, it also supports uh, EV toll. And so uh, from the Joby perspective, certainly we're very excited about the path uh, that this material supports. <clears throat> the last thing I'll touch on is just some, a refresher of where we started uh, back in 2015, when many of us began working this path and where we are today. So if we were to look back uh, five years ago, not very long ago, we would see that the world was not ready for electric propulsion. Uh, within EASA, they had done a tiny bit of work, a little bit of work on sport aircraft, and China was uh, just starting to get engaged with some of that as well. And Europe, uh, the FA wasn't doing much. Uh, there was a little bit of electric discussion in small aircraft at that point. Within a year, uh, China began to grow their information on sport aircraft and small aircraft. Uh, in Europe, there were, were some projects through Pipistrel and others to accelerate uh, uh, these kind of designs. Uh, Siemens, which is now the Rolls-Royce activity, uh, kind of grew very quickly in those years. By 2017, we had seen uh, the world really starting to wake up. Europe was beginning to certify active projects. Uh, the CAAC was standing up its rulemaking activities, engaged heavily around the world to, to, uh, to design a regulatory set. Uh, it's continued in 2018 and 2019. And today, in 2020, uh, we stand at a point where uh, in Europe, they have a, a relatively robust way to certify electric aircraft. Uh, CAAC is now on the on the very edge of putting in place a new set of rules that will allow widespread adoption of electric aircraft. And that's really exciting. Um, and so, so with all that said, um, I think uh, I, I will tell you that um, I'm excited to talk to you later in the week about how we use these tools to certify electric aircraft. Uh, I, I feel very lucky to have been able to work with all of you, all my friends on this call, um, to help bring some of this material around the world. And I think what's happening in the next five and 10 years is going to happen really quickly, uh, and it's going to be extremely exciting. Uh, so Willie, thank you very much for giving me a minute to lay out some opening remarks here, and I look forward to continuing conversations in the future days. Yes, hi, uh, and uh, thank you very much, Greg, uh, for getting up early. And like he said, he will be available also on uh, Thursday in our, on our Evito day, uh, which is, uh, I think, uh, a day which I hope he can give us some more insights of Joby, because up to now, um, Joby didn't tell so much about what they're saying, so we were really surprised seeing what how much they have been flying with the, with their aircraft already and maybe we get some more insights and especially also on the certification side because this is a big question like we know now that eVTOLs are flying but when they can be flying legally for personal transport this will be the great uh, question so thank you very much Greg and our next guest um, is again a motor manufacturer um, uh, a better two motor manufacturers from uh, uh, a cooperation. We'll have uh, Martin Dvorsky and uh, Jörg Janning, uh, which is MGM Compro. 
Uh, and the yeah, other presentation is coming up uh, right now. My screen has been blacked a little bit. I'm not sure what this is. Um, but uh, Martin, uh, you're going to give us an overview. Martin is uh, working on electric, getting electric aviation into the air quite a while with his uh, company already in Czech Republic. And he has some interesting insights and news uh, where he's going to talk about. Martin, it's yours. Good, good, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, Willi, for the word. Uh, as well, I would like to thank to everybody for the opportunity of uh, saying some words uh, on this conference. Uh, so my name is Martin and I'm from company MGM Compro. Uh, like Willi already said, uh, a lot of our products are dedicated for electric propulsion as well, of course, for the electric aviation. If we can go to the next slide, uh, I can tell some let's say, general figures. So we standardly deliver the complex electric propulsion systems in the range of uh, 10 to 100 kilowatt, but we have the project as well now going up to 400 kilowatt of continuous power. And uh, our company has uh, our own design and development and manufacturing facilities uh, in a heart of Europe in Czech Republic. Yeah. So as well, the R&D and all of that is, uh, I would say, in-house in GM. Let's say our experience is uh, almost 30 years uh, as our company is focusing to electric propulsion almost since the beginning. So we have, I would say, long-term experience in this field. And uh, our team consists of about 50 professionals. Uh, currently, our goods and our products and our propulsion systems are exported to about 50 countries. If you can go to the next slide, I will briefly uh, introduce our portfolio. So like I already mentioned, uh, our uh, main product uh, products are uh, electronic speed controllers for electric motors, as well called inverters. And uh, uh, we have the controls for various voltages and various uh, uh, power ranges. So currently we are going up to 800 volts and up to 450 kilowatts continuous power. And uh, another, uh, let's say another product uh, from our portfolio as well belongs to the electric propulsion. So as, uh, as the other products you can find in our portfolio, the BMS systems, we have as well very specialty one for the aviation uses with the uh, doubled uh, major parts and very unique self-check uh, firmware. Then we produce and design the complete battery systems for, as well for the aviation usage with very special safety features and as well fire extinguishing systems and stuff like that. And uh, together with that, we offer the charging systems. And of course, then uh, we offer to our customers uh, that we, from the scratch, deliver to them the complex electric propulsion unit based on their requirements. If you can go to the next slide, then uh, you can see some of the, some of the project <clears throat> and partners that we have. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot name all of them due to a lot of NDAs, but uh, on this slide, you can see that we delivered uh, a propulsion, for example, for Airbus e Fund and for Avector EPOS, uh, for many other electric aircraft and as well as gliders. So you can find, let's say, uh, the products of MGM Compro in many, many uh, aviation projects. And I think that until these days, we have most of the flying uh, electric aircraft in the air. So if you can go to the next slide, uh, here is some brief summary. And uh, like I already said uh, in my presentation, I will talk more to the particular project. So in a light sport aircraft, we have about 21 projects already flying and about 20 of them in, in the development stages. Uh, in this sector, we talk about the power, uh, I would say, mostly up to 90 kilowatt, but we have as well the projects which are going uh, up to 150. Uh, of course, as well, in this field, the certification will be the major topic pretty soon, in my opinion. Uh, so we are focusing as well uh, with our partners uh, into, into this field. Then, uh, as another part, uh, which we already discussed here, are the EV tolls. We have about 15 projects uh, running. Uh, mostly the power uh, that we deliver to this project is between 20 and 80 kilowatt per motor, but we have as well the projects with uh, higher power used per motor. 
and uh, uh, in our opinion, this is forefront of the e aviation technology. Yeah. Then regarding the UAVs, we have a lot of projects already running and flying as well as commercial with, with some part, partially commercial usage. There are about uh, 18 projects currently and mostly we deliver power between 5 to 30 kilowatt per motor. And there are, there are really some of the interesting projects in the field. Um, I will talk, talk about them uh, on the next slide. So then, uh, then you know, sorry, I forgot to talk about the cell launching gliders. This is already, in my opinion, uh, uh, existing uh, part of the e aviation industry. So we deliver as well a lot of propulsion for self launching, uh, self launching gliders. Uh, on this slide, uh, you can see uh, one of the one of the EVTOR projects that MGM Compro is part of. This is the XTI aircraft, XTI Trifun. Uh, this, uh, this ambitious aircraft already did the validation tests uh, uh, more than a year ago. Uh, the concept includes the four electric uh, motors and three, three generators. So it's a hybrid aircraft and MGM provides uh, brushless electric motors, controllers, inverters, and as well as some development capacities for this project. If we will go to the next slide, on this slide you can see the aircraft called Phoenix and MGM Compro uh, focused in this project on replacement of Rotax 912. And uh, I would say then that this project uh, is mainly focused as well on the flight range. Yeah, so we designed from the scratch the propulsion for this aircraft, focusing on a, as, as long uh, flight span as possible. And currently this aircraft can fly electrically, I would say up to three hours. We did a few hundred uh, flying hours already with this aircraft. And, uh, and uh, we as well introduced the automotive charging uh, in this aircraft uh, a few years ago uh, at Aero Friedrichshafen where I think we were the first one using this technology as well for the uh, electric aviation. If we will go to the next slide, uh, you can see here the drone, the UAV from the Norwegian company Griff, Griff Aviation. And this is the example of the real UAV projects uh, which are visible on the market. Uh, I would say this project has have requirements on a safety, cooling, and uh, as well on lightweight solution. And uh, as a, I would say, interesting point, uh, we developed a specialty redundant systems for the UAVs, which were used, for example, in a new space technology Cantas. And this uh, technology allows to our partner Griff to replace their uh, standard systems, uh, which included eight electric motors, and replace them with only four of them and in my opinion, keeping the, the same safety level. If you go to the next slide, here we can see very interesting project. Uh, this project is uh, a commuter class aircraft for, from Czech company Evector. The particular type is EV55, and uh, this aircraft is using two PT6 uh, engines. And our project uh, is focusing to replace this, uh, these two PT6s with uh, electric, uh, 400 kilowatt electric uh, motors. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, sorry, this, this project is as well uh, deeply focused on uh, certifications, I would say possibilities, yeah. So, uh, for this project, we will deliver together with our partners the electric motors, then we will deliver the inverters and the complete electric propulsion, the battery safety features and charging, and uh, we will focus on the particular DOs in this project, like DO178, DO160, DO254. Uh, if we will go to the next slide, uh, on this slide, uh, there is, uh, as you can see, the Wulong, which is a very famous Chinese company uh, with a history of more than 120 years. And uh, they include uh, some of the very renowned European factories like the ATB and Shor. And uh, as you can see, they are using the automatic manufacturing lines uh, with the highest quality. And this high quality may lead to 
to, I would say, easy certification in the, in the future. Uh, they are using the European manufacturing tools and uh, this is all good and needed background to get to the certification. Uh, as you can see on this slide, they are currently working on a hybrid pro propulsion system and parallelly they have the ongoing projects uh, for the drones and as well in 2021 uh, they, they will introduce the propulsion drive for the fixed wing aircraft in Europe. Uh, why we have the slide here is that uh, we, uh, we started a very interesting cooperation with this uh, strong partner and we are currently working on a common project for high power. Uh, hello Martin. Uh, just one second for interrupting you, um, uh, because uh, we, we weren't sure be before now. The Jörg uh, from Bologna, he's also in the call now and he's mm -hmm. unmuted, so he may join you there because I wasn't sure before, just as information. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I can see Jörg. <laughs> so okay, I just great. Thank you. Finish the sentence that currently we, are, we have a few of the common projects and uh, uh, it's not a secret that we plan to work as well on EV55 together and there are some other ones which are all focused currently on replacing the PP6 for a large aircraft. So this is, uh, this is our strong partner and I think we will uh, do a lot of interesting um, things together. So here, uh, if there is something you want to say regarding mm -hmm. this slide, now the word is yours. No, I think it's, uh, it's good how, how you said it. I think everything is said and Let's move on and wait for the questions. Okay, sure. So then, uh, like Pierre said, there will be definitely uh, the potential to discuss the cooperation of Long and MGM uh, during the discussion. So if you can move to the next slide. Uh, I would just mention here again that uh, as all the previous speakers uh, already mentioned, uh, the e aviation is uh, not the powering era anymore. And I'm pretty sure that now we will see more and more, uh, more and more projects uh, to be like uh, to rise uh, on the market. And uh, of course, the major topic will be the certification. So I'm pretty sure that there is very interesting future in front of us. If you will go to the next slide, which is the last slide of my presentation, I would like to thank again everybody for your attention, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much um, and uh, interesting insights. We have a little problem which we always have in our forums. We are a little bit, uh, and I switch my screen on again, we are a little bit behind of time. Um, so we don't have questions here. We will have the breakout session with questions afterwards. And the good thing is we see that the communication channel with the chat really works well because in the chat we see a lot of questions asked and already answered by the speakers after their presentation. So this is really an advantage which you don't have in real conference and so uh, thank you very much and now our next speaker um, I'm honored to have uh, Tina here whom I know for a very long time and Tina is working on uh, electric aviation since the beginning and they started already with electric motor gliders when most of the other people still thought that this is something which never will get to any market. Uh, they are in, they had the first uh, aircraft to the certification and they are also in the eVTOL sector, very present. I leave you to explain how. Thank you, Tina, and thank you for being with us. Tina is muted. Uh, can you unmute? Tina, you're still muted. I think ah, I should be. Now it's better. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon to China. Good morning to the US. Uh, early morning. Good morning to everybody from Europe. Um, I'm honored to be here. Yes, we started flying electrically much before it was cool and we've tried interesting things. I would like to walk you through what we believe uh, is actually important as we go forward based on our experience. So on the first flight, there is our large cargo moving UAV, uh, hybrid electric, which I'm sure you will hear a lot about in the future. But today, I think it is time to reflect on the experience in order to draw certain conclusions on how to best proceed for the future. So can you please advance the slide? 
Next slide. Yes. So Pipistrel is a family owned company, approximately 300 employees uh, focused on uh, three European locations, as well as setting up a major presence in the vicinity of Nanjing in the municipality of Jurong, um, an air park, as well as a production facility. Uh, the company was established in 1989, so we've been busy with aviation in different ways for a long time. Uh, but since the very beginning, Pipistrel promoted affordable flight. Uh, this basically meant first simple flying machines, then a migration to composite materials. All of our products are composite materials uh, built and uh, as of 2007, we made the switch towards flying electrically. Next slide, please. So at the moment, we produce 12 different models. Three of them are electric, uh, more and more every day. And as of this year, uh, Pipistrel is actually receiving more orders for electric aircraft than the rest of the aircraft that we produce, which still use conventional powertrains. So uh, it's a very exciting time to be in. Our production rate is quite high, one aircraft for every working day. So between 220 and 250 new aeroplanes leave to customers across the, the globe. Uh, our presence is in 97 countries on all continents, uh, also China has uh, CAC has validated type certifications for our aircraft uh, and uh, we are able to serve both private government and fleet customers. Next slide. Coming to uh, one back. Okay, coming to electric flight. Uh, this is this is the timeline of project that either Pipistrel did on our own or with partners. It started in 2007 with motor gliders. In 2014, uh, with uh, Siemens E aircraft, we flew the WhatsApp project, which was really the foundation for the first type certified aeroplane uh, with EASA this year. Uh, we flew aircraft powered by hydrogen. This was a project led by DLR and H2Fly, where Pipistrel was leading the flight test campaign in 2016. So it was an interesting hands-on experience as well as a, a quite a complicated exercise in certification, even for non-commercial operations, uh, just because the technology was so cutting edge. Um, then Alpha Electro started to ship to customers in 2017 and this year uh, important milestones uh, EASA type certification for the engines as well as the aircraft separately. Um, for early next year we are looking forward to demonstrate hybrid electric flight with the hybrid Pantera as one of the two aircraft flying in project Mahepa and um, the German Aerospace Center DLR with H2 Fly and University of Ulm will be flying the next generation of the hydrogen powered uh, HY4. So we've seen battery powered aircraft, hydrogen powered aircraft, electric hybrid aircraft, as well as engines. So uh, accumulating this kind of experience uh, puts us in a very good position also for EV tall and more complicated projects uh, in the future. Next slide. So when one discusses certification, um, and I like what Greg Bowles was saying before, of course, the primary focus goes on the product, on, on the aircraft itself, where uh, it matters which aircraft category uh, you are putting it in. This then also unlocks or disables certain operations. But uh, it's not only the aircraft, it's the propulsion, namely the engine, the propeller that needs to certify. It. But then, of course, also all of the processes uh, which are needed to consistently and uh, uh, consistently and uh, in a quality way produce your new products. So Pipistrel is a holder of the EASA production approvals as well as design approvals and uh, we are quite proud that we are able to do a design from scratch to certification in-house. But what really matters for the operations is actually not just the aircraft. It's the operational rules, it's pilot licenses, uh, it's questions about maintenance. You know, existing mechanics have not been educated about 
hybrid powertrains, about batteries, about high voltage specifics. Uh, and the similar situation is with first responders, with uh, fire brigades on airport, off airport. These people just don't expect that electric aircraft are coming. So a lot of work has been done between Pipistrel and national authorities, as well as specialist agencies, so that this content can become part of future standards. Next slide, please. So Pipistrel has contributed to ASTM, SAC, and also Chinese-led uh, initiatives since uh, 2011. And uh, being part of these groups and being able to share the knowledge has unlocked uh, certification paths. So in this year, uh, Pipistrel was able to secure exemptions in Europe that allow the Velis Electro as the type certified aeroplane by EASA to be used commercially, to be used for pilot training. And this is also because the engine was certified separately and because the batteries are compliant to the very stringent DO311A standard. Next slide. So when one is discussing battery certification, uh, there should be no shortcuts. Uh, fact is that uh, battery cell manufacturers are unable to secure quality control of each separate battery cell. So the battery packaging and safety solutions have to be robust enough to handle surprises, not only when the battery is new, but also uh, when it ages. So particular attention was uh, given to adequate testing, which was witnessed by EASA. All of the blue cables you see here uh, on the test article, the silver box, which is the battery of the Velis Electro, is only for measurements inside the battery pack. So this is a fault tolerant battery pack, fully compliant to DO311A, and it is also crash worthy. So drop tests were performed uh, on battery packs uh, separate from the aeroplane as well as part of the certification to ensure adequate levels of safety for the operators uh, of the Velis Electro. Next slide. So why are we doing all of this? Uh, of course, uh, there are environmental reasons. Um, it makes sense to look into the future that is uh, cleaner, brighter, and delivers a better quality of, of life by not emitting as many emissions as we all do today also when it comes to flying and air travel. But the other lucrative component is also costs. So in 13 years of experience, uh, people, people, Pipistrel has uh, developed in-house capability of battery design and certification, battery management, our own engines, cockpit instruments, chargers, the whole portfolio. And as we are able to tightly integrate these technologies, the operating costs are quite remarkable. So something in the order of 30 to 40 euros per flight hour, which includes the depreciation of the aircraft, really changes uh, the game when it comes to pilot training. And these are real life performance from aeroplanes that fly with customers every day. Next slide. So Velis Electro is a two-seat standard category aeroplane with a flight endurance of approximately one hour with all the reserves, but it meets uh, safety standards that are the same or better for any normal category aeroplane. So I think it is an achievement on its own, but it is also uh, a lighthouse, a sign for the industry that certification is possible, that also a small company like Pipistrel can deliver these products. So hopefully uh, others will follow very, very soon. And Pipistrel is excited about all of the regulatory standardization and technological uh, developments that are happening uh, on the globe at the moment with this accelerated pace. And um, we look uh, confidently into the future, also upscaling the size of the products as well as moving into the VTOL segment. Uh, especially when it comes to logistics and cargo delivery as the first applications in years 2023. So thank you and I will be open for questions you may have in the chat or in the breakout rooms. Okay, so thank you very much, Tine. Uh, let me switch my image on again. And uh, I know uh, 
if we would have you talking about all the projects you're doing and all the projects you would be in, you probably could talk all day. And the problem is then you couldn't work on any further projects. Uh, How can you get eFlight Journal? Just scan the QR code on this page. Or just type in your browser www.eflightjournal.com then you receive the page with the latest online news on electric flying, EV tolls, and everything which is connected with electric mobility in the air. Or you can click the link on the top and then you go to the latest PDF version which you either can read in the Yumpu reader directly on your screen like a conventional magazine or you can go and download the magazine as PDF file so that you can read it offline wherever you want. Thanks for watching and goodbye.